Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome in to the Graham Lick and Mac Lane podcast presented by Ingalls, the official supermarket of Graham Lick and Mac Lane. It is a football Friday, and all of these teams, Mac, that took the week off last week, all these bye weeks, I, we didn't <laughs> agree to that, but they decided, oh, we need a week off, you know, we need to rest. <laughs> they are back, Florida State, Miami, North Carolina, back in action, as well as some other big games. So this is going to be a good one. Come on, KG. Big week. We're headed down to the 305 to hang out with Miami. So uh, we, we get to see them up close and personal, but excited to see all these teams, you know, back. It, it is interesting, you know, when bye week hits and who it hits for. And you're just like, where are all our friends go? Where are they? Yeah, uh, where are they? I think we have another one coming up next week, maybe, but um, it'll be good. You know, teams rest it up, hopefully, and, uh, you know, get back to action and no sleepy games. We don't need any sleepy games mm-hmm. from anybody. A little rusty. We'll talk about that. We might have a couple. Oh, I think that could definitely happen. But uh, people, some of these teams might be sleeping. They might be sleepwalking through a first quarter, but you can't sleep on Eric McLean on the grill. You just can't. <laughs> and Mac, rumor has it, you were grilling up some uh, ribeyes the other day yeah. from Ingles. Oh, man. Of course. Of course I was. You know, first of all, you go to Ingles and you have one of the best meat selections I've ever seen in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have anything you want. You know, they cut a lot of their stuff that day. Uh, if you want some hamburger meat, they're just grinding that thing out and you can tell them how much you want. They got it for you fresh right there and done. And, and so, you know, as I'm browsing and, and looking around all this beautiful meat, I'm just kind of salivating, thinking about it again. Uh, I see these beautiful ribeyes and I'm like, boom, that's it. Got to have it. And, and you know me, KG, I like to reverse <laughs> sear it, take some time, low and slow. I've got the super smoker setting turned on. And it's just all that flavor just soaking in. Uh, and here's the key, though. It, it's really kind of – I remember the first time I ever did this, it looks like jerky when you do it because it's like this weird tinted flavor or, or excuse me, uh, color. And you take it off and you're like, oh, this is weird. But the trick is you then crank it up. 500 degrees is what I like to do. You put your cast iron skillet in there, let it get as hot as all get out. Then I put in this this kind of herb, garlic, butter, you know, kind of finisher. Ooh. Put that on there. It starts sizzling. Boom, hit your steaks like two minutes each side, maybe three if you want a little more well done. Flip it, do the same thing, take it off. And you can literally take a spoon and go like that. And it's like you're eating pudding steak. It's it's unbelievable. So good, so flavorful. Uh, Go check out Instagram, Twitter. It's on there. Uh, And I'll leave a little recipe on there as well. Uh, So where you can get this is, of course, Ingles. And let's go to a quick message from our friends before we jump into this football Friday. Come on. It's time to discover the convenience and time savings of contact-free pickup with Ingalls Curbside. Just visit shop.ingles-markets.com or download the app. And your Ingalls personal shopper gets to work with specialized training on how to select the freshest items for a pre-scheduled pickup. They'll even text you with updates. You pull up to a designated space and your personal shopper delivers your items right to your vehicle. Fresh, fast, and affordable. It's all in the bag. Ingalls. Low prices. Love the savings. Mac, let's dive into these games. Our big game breakdown is going to feature two games this weekend. And of course, it's going to start with the Louisville game. Number 10, Notre Ooh. Dame is traveling to number 25, Louisville. Notre Dame's a six and a half point favorite, 7.30 p.m. on ABC. Another primetime ACC versus Notre Dame matchup. <laughs> and, you know, this was a game when Louisville hired Jeff Brom. This was a game a lot of people had circled, right? Because mm-hmm. the beginning of the schedule did look manageable. Could you get to this game undefeated? Could it be a night game? Could you pack out the stadium and, and let it be a truly kind of a, the beginning of the Jeff Brom era? And that has happened. Louisville has held up their side of the bargain, Mac. And this is one of the biggest games of the weekend. No, it absolutely is. And, and even more importantly, uh, to some, depends on who you ask, uh, Louisville has a number by their name. And you yeah. love to see that. You love to see kind of the respect there. Uh, I didn't know if it would happen before this or, or after this game, of course, if they got a victory. So, you know, big kudos to them. And, you know, a lot of thoughts in this game, KG, of, of kind of how it could go, where we've been, where we're, we're going uh, with Louisville. And, and to, to start on their side, um, you know, I, I think obviously the adversity that they faced at Carter Finley, uh, Friday night game, electric, blackout, fans are excited, and a really good defense, right? I, I don't yeah. think that NC State has gotten enough credit, you know, for the defense that they play and just how unique it is. You know, they, they do a lot of different things, show a lot of different looks. And, you know, now this week you're playing a much more traditional style, you know, defense where they're just going to line up and they are who they are. Uh, you know, and, and as I said with NC State, they try to move around, force a lot of issues, 
try to really create chaos and and that worked you know for 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 to an extent Louisville just able to capitalize on some things and and won the game so now that you're back home it's a sellout of your own that place mm-hmm. is going to be nuts it's going to be packed uh you you've got a top 10 team coming to town uh and it's ABC like it's it's night let's go you know a massive opportunity here what are you able to do so you know, again, a couple of things off the top. Looking at Jack Plummer, cannot make the mistakes that he did uh, right. against NC State. Um, you know, and, and you, you would hope and think that he's going to have time, but does Notre Dame kind of see what NC State did and try to heat him up, try to blitz him, try to create, again, that chaos and him getting off to, to a slow start there? I think Louisville also has to run the ball way better. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think it's tough when you get forced into kind of that one dimension and a run is taken away from you, and that that's what Notre Dame's going to try to do. So, you know, when I look at it from that aspect, KG, offensive line has to play well. Jack has to, to obviously make big plays and, and continue to push the ball downfield that he has better than anybody in the ACC. Um, and, and for them to get this dub, not saying he has to be perfect, but just can't make those same mistakes because it, it'll ultimately cost him. He doesn't have to be perfect, but he I, – I really think for Louisville to feel good, he can't throw a pick. I mean, he can't no. turn the ball over. He has six no. picks so far this season, which – is a concern. And when I look at this game, I think the defenses is where I'm going to start because Notre Dame's defense has looked very good. Their offense yeah. at times has not been as explosive, even though, you know, we're hearing about Sam Hartman, but they still aren't really scoring much points against good teams. But they limited Ohio State really well and they limited Duke, two really good offenses. On the flip side, Louisville's defense is what worries me the most, Mac. Louisville's <laughs> defense is not what it was last year. Yeah that not, you know, lead in the nation in sacks like it was last year. And Louisville's definitely played the much easier schedule compared to Notre Dame. I'm not sure they've played an offense like this and, and a quarterback like Sam Hartman, even though we all know what happened the last time Sam Hartman was in Louisville. So I think this game starts with the defenses for me. Yeah. And you know what? It's interesting that, you know, you kind of say that because, you know, I, I think when I look at Louisville's defense, and what they don't want to have happen. They do not want Notre Dame to go 12 personnel, Mm -hmm. run the ball 50 times. Like they they don't want that. And they don't, they definitely don't want it. If Jack and and the boys on offense go three and out or get a turnover, like you you have to score. And I think one thing you have to run the ball against Notre Dame. We always say that, right. Or, you know, whatever it is, you you, you just can't go three and out. And, And I think that, if they can control the ball from that aspect, Notre Dame, then it's tough. And and that's not a game that Louisville wants to play. But if Louisville can dictate the pace of the game offensively and score and move the ball mm-hmm. and kind of force the issue for Notre Dame where they can't just pound the rock, they can't just take it slow and go power left, power right, inside zone, outside zone, whatever, where they have to force it downfield and, and maybe get a little uncomfortable, then you're like, okay, you're playing our game. You know, you're keeping up with what we're doing. <laughs> I don't think if, if Notre Dame can control it, force the issue, that, that's what Louisville wants to do. Because, again, a three-man front, although Ashton Gelati and, and company are playing at a very high level, um, I, I just it's harder, man. That big offensive line, yeah. Roderick Estimate is a freak, um, and, and they're doing their thing up there. So, in a funny sense, how can you put it on Sam's shoulders where he has to throw the ball you know, 30-plus times? I, I think that's where Louisville wants to create that and really wants that to get going. Well, you know, for people who might not be super familiar with Duke, I'm going to go back to the Duke game for a second. Duke and Notre Dame coming into that game profiled similarly. They wanted to play similar games. Duke wants to play more ball control. They want to ground and pound. They want to run it. Yeah. Louisville has been much more explosive yes. and able to sling the ball. And this is my, my stat here. Louisville leads the ACC in explosive plays of 30 plus yards and 40 plus yards. Yes. Louisville's been explosive. Now, have they played the toughest schedule? No. I think styles make fights and Louisville has to turn this game into more of a high flying, fast paced game. They have right. to. Right. Otherwise, I, they're not going to win this. Duke had a better chance of beating Notre Dame at their own game than yes. I think Louisville does. Yes. No, I totally agree. And and that's what I'm talking about. How can they dictate that? How can, you know, the offense do their part? Because, you know, if you just think about it, the way that Duke kind of got behind turnovers and three and outs, they, they weren't missed field goals. They, they weren't able to capitalize. Mm-hmm. And then that Notre Dame team can just sit there and grind, grind, grind. You look up and, 
Okay, it's halftime. Here we go. You know, what, what are we going to do? What adjustments, you know, can we make? And Duke did a great job of that. Uh, but it was more so having the success. They, they didn't really do too much differently. They still ran the ball, found success, were able to score points and, and make that a ball game. So my question is, if, if Louisville turns this into a track meet, can Notre Dame keep up? If they have the ability. They might not. I mean, they might get hit in the mouth. The one thing that is interesting that, you know, I never give Notre Dame credit for, at, at least these last couple of years, is they have gotten much faster just as a team, mm. and especially defensively. Like, it's not just – Big Ten football hits you in the right. mouth. We're bigger, stronger. These guys are going sideline to sideline, <clears> moving <throat> around. Linebackers look exceptional, surefire tacklers. So how can you combat that? How can you get going? I think is going to be instrumental, KG, seriously. Huge test. Notre Dame yeah. is much more tested. This is a very much a, a test. Louisville, right. are, you, are you a top 25 team? Yeah. The other two things. Interestingly enough, mm-hmm. interestingly enough, too, you talk about that testing Two really emotional games for Notre Dame, you know, back to back. Uh, And and you could argue one, two for for Louisville in that Friday night. But, you know, both teams, are they like kind of worn down going into this thing? Kind of like, oh, my gosh, like this. Here we go again, kind of in prime time. That'll be an interesting factor to to see as well. Notre Dame is is probably the more worn down team. And here's the other factor. Notre Dame has Southern Cal next week. Right. Is there any sort of we're looking ahead to Southern Cal. I already saw uh, maybe some questions about Southern Cal, some comments about Southern Cal and, you know, Southern Cal's good this year. So I think that really benefits Louisville. My other thing I want to point out here, Mac, is Notre Dame is five and one against the spread Mm. this season. Mm. They have covered. covered. Now the Duke game, that was a barely with the two point conversion, but they did it. (laughs) And the spread here is six and a half. Yeah. We need yeah. to make a pick, Mac. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, do you think someone's in, in Coach Freeman's headset? Hey, man, I got a lot of money on this game. Yeah. You got to go for two. You got to do it. Uh, not at Notre Dame, not at the no, bastion I'm, of I'm, morality I'm, that is Notre Dame. <laughs> but when they did, I was like, what? No <laughs> way. I had this in the bag. And here they go for two. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, but yeah, what would what, you say it is? Six and a half? Six and a half, as of now, as of Thursday. Here's the deal, guys. This is so <laughs> dumb what I'm about to do. But Louisville is going to break the streak. 30 oh. games. 30 games, which is more than FSU back in the day, which is pitiful and mm. unbelievable that we let this happen as a conference. We just Wait, it's regular this. season games, right? Yes, but that's the yeah. same thing that FSU did, regular season. Well, mm. what is it? It's only one that's postseason. That's us, <laughs> luckily, uh, you know, in, in whatever year that was, 2020. Um, it's been a long time, and here's the deal. Make it happen. Louisville needs to be rocking that place. How much? That place should be have? lit. Should be sixty thousand seats. We need you. Okay, get the brown water flowing. Get crazy as all get out. Make Sam remember last year. Ooh. Different circumstances, but make him remember. Get up in his grill, pressure him. Sam, I love you, but you left us. Here's the deal. I need him to get it done. So Louisville's you're taking Louisville. Covering. Louisville outright. Let's go, Cards. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, Notre Dame no, minus six and a this half. This is a smart. It's a dumb pick when I'm doing. Kansas. Yeah, I, I get. I get what you're doing, and <laughs> I just Louisville is just less proven. You know, I yeah. could they? I wouldn't be shocked if they found a way to win this game, but they've right. got to make this game their style. Otherwise, yes. they cannot be in a in a bully ball kind of game with no. Notre Dame like Duke was. And you don't want to do that. I mean, Duke had every chance too, Mac. Let's let's not forget. Duke had every I chance. I know. Do fans know. Okay, (laughs) let's get to our next game here in our big game breakdown. Syracuse at number 14, North Carolina. North Carolina's Mm -hmm. back from their bye week. North Carolina's an eight-point favorite, 330 on ESPN. Different situations, right? UNC coming off a bye. Mac Brown was saying they got healthy at certain spots. Syracuse coming off a brutal game against Clemson. So that's a very different situation. But could you get a sleepy start, 330, you're at home. And North Carolina hasn't exactly been great at covering the spread this year. And I think we're still not in a bad way necessarily, but I'm still wondering, you know, what we're going to see from UNC each week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I agree with you. And, and, you know, it's, it's kind of been a deal where I don't know if they're dictating it or or what the deal is, but they're, they're, they've won different ways. Right. And and I think that's good. That shows the right. team has, you know, different strengths and, and they're able to do different things, which which is a big positive. The the thing I've been most proud about is their running attack. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, they're running the football at a really high clip, which is impressive, right at 170 ish yards, you know, per game. And, and, you know, can they do that against this Syracuse team, which Clemson couldn't, I mean, Clemson could not get a consistent run game going short yardage was a struggle. Um, So, so is UNC able to kind of capture that and uh, maybe do a little bit better there? I think you saw great success from Cade Klubnick getting out of the pocket. So can Drake may replicate that? Uh, because Syracuse is going to bring junk. I mean, th- that's just what mm-hmm. they did. I think they had like 13 tackles for loss against Clemson. That's crazy. That's why. That's a massive number there. And maybe it's maybe the stat was wrong. I don't know. We'll see. It's, that's what that's it says. Crazy. On, uh, that's crazy. We got to double check that. That's a ton. That's a ton. Um, <laughs> you know, but are they able to replicate against you know North Carolina? Th- this game is really weird to me for a couple of reasons. No, number one, is Carolina going to be sleepy? You know, like you mm-hmm. said, coming off a of bye week playing cues, you know, it is what it is, whatever. And then a Syracuse team, I can see this going one or two ways. Are they banged up and hurt from the Clemson game? Or are they kind of taking that right. and, and a little bit maybe angry that, that maybe they didn't capitalize and they were a couple of turnovers away, you know, from from beating those guys. And we see them go on a, a big run here. So I'm, I'm really fascinated by both sides. I have to lean quarterback, though, and think Drake May is going to ultimately <laughs> have this eruption game. Um, you know, I know he had the, the 400 it. yards, but you know, just statistically to ha- see him have a really big game, this might be it. Let's talk about Drake May for a second, because overall to start the year, he's completing 73% of his passes, which is very good. 1100 yards, but five touchdowns, four picks. He does have three rushing touchdowns. Is there anything wrong? Is it just, you know, when you have such high expectations, these things happen, UNC still off to their best start since 1997. They're winning games. Right. right. So you can't be too mad about it. Yeah. No, I, I think it, it is interesting. Um, you know, cause you, you look at some of the situations, how do the picks happen? Who did they happen against? You know, that Minnesota game, if, if I remember correctly, like it was some, t- it was some weird stuff that happened. Um, you know, South Carolina, maybe you're like, ah, I wish you wouldn't have thrown that. Um, oh, that was a silly pass. And, and here it goes. But you know, I think just his percentages are electric. I mean, he, he hasn't thrown under 70%, you know, all year long. His best was 75, first game of the year. Uh, That's and he crazy. he didn't have this guy, Nate McCollum. Um, you know, he, he's thrown for over 400 once. It's just, I don't know, it's kind of a weird deal where you want him to, to pack the stat sheet, but then you also want him to run the ball more, and that's but what also, they're doing. Yeah. They're being effective. And their defense has been better than last year. He's not right. – he doesn't need to go out there and score 50. So it's exactly. a different situation. Exactly. So to me, accuracy is through the roof. We've seen the decisions that he's made. Now, he has been sacked nine times, which five of those came last week against Pitt. So that's kind of a mm-hmm. big jump in the number. It was just four. So more than doubled, uh, you know, in one game. Um, I, I, I'm fine with Drake. I, I think he's still one of the best in the country. I think he's going to be the number one or number two pick. Uh, again, decisions he's making, throws that he's made. The lefty throw was crazy. Yeah. Just how effective he is with his legs when he needs to be. I mean, he has three rushing touchdowns as well. So I, I still think he, you know, he's one of the best. It's just, it's a weird year. Like same thing for Riley Leonard before he got hurt. He's not stuffing the stat sheet. These guys mm-hmm. are playing at a high level, winning for their teams, playing winning football. And at the end of the day, that that's what matters to them. That's the most important thing to them. And uh, I, I think that he he's just fine. He's fine. I'm glad you bring up the sacks, Mac, because this is my crazy stat. Syracuse leads the ACC in sacks mm. so far this season, 16. Mm. And as you mentioned, Pitt was able to really get after North Carolina and sack the quarterback. Also, randomly, North Carolina and Syracuse have not played since 2020, so it has been a minute, just throwing that in there. Because of the sack numbers, because of UNC coming off a bye, and because, to me, the team that had the most success against UNC was App State with very much a running quarterback and Mm running-centered attack, I'm going to take Syracuse to cover here. Give me the orange plus eight. I think this game is uncomfortable. Yeah. I think UNC finds a way, but I'm going to take Syracuse to cover. Okay. I like that. Um, I do want to say this real quick. Um, there are two other people tied with 16 sacks. Just throwing that out That's there. That's true. That's true. Just throwing that out They're there. tied for the lead. You are correct. But it is impressive. It is impressive, especially <laughs> with a, uh, you know, a three-man front. Keep and, me honest. And, you know, dialing it up, trying to, trying to do that. Um, you, did you say Syracuse? You took Syracuse to cover? I did. Give me the orange. What is it? It's eight. It's eight and a eight. half. Hmm. Eight. That's tough. I think because if UNC wins by a touchdown, you're you're know. golden if you take Syracuse. I know. I think there might be a little lingering injuries from the yeah, Clemson true. game for Syracuse. True. I think 
Just take the heels. You know Carolina you're taking the comes heels. Off. I'm taking the heels. <laughs> I'm about to just plummet in our race. Am, are, am I? Who? What's the? What's the record right now for all the you people? You are one game up. You're 24 and 17. I'm 23 and 18. So I'm about to be two games behind. I'm losing yeah, you're in just, radio. You're, you're go ahead and saying that, that you're wrong. You don't know that. I just don't feel great about it. I just don't feel great. This whole week, I don't. All these picks you guys are hearing, do not take it to the bank. Do not take it to the bank. But if I go take mine to the them, bank, I'll tell you you should have. <laughs> take mine to the bank. I'm feeling good. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Some big spreads. We got some 20 point spreads in these uh, three more games here before the speed round. Virginia Tech at number five, Florida State. Florida State's a 23 and a half point favorite, 3 30 p.m. on ABC. We talk a lot more about this game on Wednesday's episode with Kyron Drones, so make sure you check that out. Florida State also coming off a bye. I mean, the, the big question here is has Virginia Tech taken significant steps right. or is Pitt that bad? Because that was our question last week. And Florida State coming off a bye. Can they get healthier? Can they not overlook this game? Can they be motivated, start strong? You know, it's kind of that classic is this game really, is this team really better? Or, and is Florida State going to be a little sleepy here? Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. You know, it, it, it's, uh, it's, it was an interesting two game stretch for the Knowles, but I think it all revolved around Clemson. Um, you know, that Boston College game, they're going up there, you know, is what it is. It's BC. Like, let's be real. Um, you know, almost lost to Holy Cross. So how much attention, you know, were they getting with Clemson right on the horizon? Um, and then that game's weird. Florida State's up 21. Boston College comes roaring back, almost wins the game. Uh, but they get out of there and survive. Next week, they go to Tigertown. Very uncomfortable game. Clemson comfortably in control of that game for probably 80% of it. Then this massive hit happens and momentum just gets shifted to where it's mm -hmm. relatively even, uh, you know, and you win in overtime. Emotional. A lot of different things going in on there, up and down, kind of roller coaster two games. But I have to just think that that roller coaster was ticking up. And, and after they beat Clemson, it's right here. And now it's all, it's like, hey, we did it. You know, There's this, some relief. This, we conquered this, you know, mountain that we haven't been able to do in eight seasons, seven attempts. And I, I just, I reflect back in 2015 when we finally beat FSU, I think we, we had lost maybe three in a row to those guys. And it's just like, God, we can't do this. We can't get mm -hmm. it done. And then we did. And I, and I remember the confidence after that KG was like, okay, like, okay, we beat these guys. Let's go. Like nobody in the country. We, we feel really good. Uh, and then, you know, we went on to win 14 games and, and lost in the natty. So, you know, I go back and forth of where I think Florida state is. Are, are they at that moment? You know, where they feel that or, you know, is this team going to be a little sleepy? Is this team going to be thinking, oh, it's just Virginia Tech. These guys aren't good. I, I just – I can't imagine that because of the coaching staff and because right. of the players. But I also know running quarterbacks are always an issue. And if Kyron is able to be in there and is able to have the success that he did last week and move around and extend plays and, and make things weird, this game could be closer than 24 points. I think 24 points is a lot. So with yeah. all that said – I think I'm going Hokies. I hate that because Florida State fans mm. are going to go crazy. But it's 20. That's a massive number. Um, I, I think Virginia Tech gets it gets closer. It's a massive than number. I think for it's 21. <laughs> yeah, it's a massive number for a team coming off an ACC win. Virginia Tech that was right. able to get some confidence. Right. And Mac, on our Wednesday episode, I, I talked about how Florida State just hasn't really looked good. Right. I would say since yeah. Southern Miss or you know LSU, and. It's not because they're not talented. And I mean, this, this team is loaded. This team is good enough to win the national championship, of course. Yeah, yeah. But they've had these past couple games where maybe they've lost a little focus. That's my question. Right. That's my right. question. Yeah. Is the focus back? And strictly, it has less to do with Florida State and more to do with the fact that this number is huge. Yes. So I'm going to take Virginia Tech plus oh, 23 man. and a half. All right. All right. I feel pretty good about that one. I feel pretty good about okay. that. Okay. I, I'm and not sure. And it's a sure low great. over under, like. I'm not sure I feel great. Yeah. I feel good. About that. I feel <laughs> we'll good see. About um, okay. Georgia Tech <laughs> at number 17, Miami. This is a 21 point Another spread. Girl. Miami's a 21 yeah. point favorite. 8 p.m. ACC Network. Mac and the squad will be down there in the 305. Where is Georgia Tech mentally? Whew. Where are they after one of the most embarrassing losses in their program's history to Bowling Green? And Miami coming off an easy win over Temple and then a bye. Miami, and then they had, what, Bethune before that. Miami has, like, I'm sure they've locked in and they've been ready to go, but they haven't really had to lock in, you could say, since A&M yeah. week. I mean, it's right. been 
a minute for Miami. Right. So the mental side of this game, Miami's better. Miami has looked really good. Yeah. This is a maturity game for me. Miami, yeah. can you go out there and, right. and handle this in a mature way? Or do we need to keep babysitting you and right. wondering and disciplining, see if you're going to mess up? <laughs> And and here's the deal. I, I think that that's valid because of what's happened in the past. Um, but the the reason this team feels different to me is they're doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah. I mean, it was 48 to zero. Bethune scores with like a minute left, <laughs> you know, so that should have been a shutout. And then you look at, at, at the game after that with Temple, um, you know, let me pull up the play by play right here, but I, I think it was very similar it was situation. Yeah. They they scored in in the second quarter. Okay, so and then forty one to seven. Like, but they these guys are they handling just handled business. it. They handled yeah, it. They're handling business the way that they're playing, running the football very well, throwing the football extremely well. I mean, they're averaging five hundred nineteen yards of offense, uh, a whole lot of points. I've been super impressed with Miami and cannot wait to see this in person. KG to get down to the three hundred five yeah. and see that big offensive line in, in a game. I mean, it, it's funny. I'm I'm going through like these stages of. You know, I, I wanted to fade Miami, you know, early. I just, you know, you always trick me. I didn't want any part of it. And then it's that media day and Coach Cristobal seeks me out like a missile and says, you're going to love this offensive line. Then I'm like, oh, man, here we go. I'm going to love this That's offensive line. That's the way line. to my heart. And I talk to Matt Lee and I'm like, oh, my gosh, this guy's <laughs> amazing. And then I go to camp and I'm like, these dudes are freaky looking. They're huge. They're massive. They're really good players. TBD and those guys got locked in. I started to see some receivers that could have mm -hmm. potential. And then we see A&M and they go crazy. And it's just like, whoo, okay. I, and we, I don't like saying the word back because, again, what does that mean? But this team is good. And uh, I think we see them flex their muscles. They're running the ball, like I said, very effectively. Yeah. Georgia Tech is giving up 230 yards a game rushing. I think Miami steamrolls them. I mean, it's funny on radio – I said I think Georgia Tech covers. I've since really dove into it. I don't think there's any way. I mean, other than okay. – I, I don't care. Listen, listen, I love Coach Key. And this is an interesting battle. It's two alumni as head mm -hmm. coaches at their schools, which I think is very important. Offensive two line offensive coaches. offensive linemen, which I love. Uh, and, and, you know, super cool to see that. But he ain't translating to the field, right? Like his emotion and passion isn't making a tackle. And I, I think that Miami flexes their muscles and – kind of takes the Notre Dame route. I mean, run it okay. 40 times. Run it until they can stop you and then play complimentary football and, and throw it around when you want. And when those safeties start creeping down, I, I think Miami steamrolls these guys. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. This is a tough one. This is a this is a tough game to pick. Miami, we both think, is going to win the game. And I like this nighttime, you know, hard rock should be pretty yeah. pretty exciting. There's going to be – The new unis. You see the unis? The yes, black the unis? Miami Knights, Ooh. right? Oh, yes. those look sick. There's going to be – I'm not going to say anything, um, but there's going to be something going on on the huddle that looks – sounds pretty exciting. <laughs> so just stay ready for that. I don't, oh, this is so hard. I'm going to take – I'm going to take Georgia Tech. I'm going to take Georgia Tech oh. cover just because – just because – Georgia Tech is better than what just happened. I think a lot of what we're seeing is prisoner of the moment. If they had not lost to Bowling Green, which of course you can't take that away, it did happen. This spread would probably be like 17 and a half in my mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm just trying to play Vegas here. Yeah. But it doesn't have much to do with Miami. I'm just right. trying to. And I, I mean, Haynes, listen, when you got a quarterback like Haynes who's yeah. playing at a very high level, um, you know, someone argue one of the best in, in the ACC. I don't think that's even an argument. You got a chance. And you never know what. But Georgia Tech's defense, oh, that worries me, man. Yeah, they're they're bad, and Miami's defense is playing at a high clip. I mean, yes. I, I think they try to pressure. I think they go man and and try to Cam Cam Kitchens is back, uh, which I think is a massive yes, that's deal. Big. Um, yeah, I think Miami rolls. <laughs> I think Miami we'll rolls. see. We'll see. We'll see. This is kind of moving weekend. We got a lot of. I know we're disagreeing. Here right Here's Don't the like, thing, though. Miami Georgia Tech that. could cover, and Miami still rolls. You know, that's right, that's right. probably. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping. 20 point also. dub and I lose. Great. Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> one more game here before our speed round. Wake Forest at Clemson. Clemson's a 21 point favorite. Another big spread. 3.30 p.m. on ACC Network. This game to me comes down to, it's, it's very simple. Mitch Griffiths has struggled to make decisions when under fire. No. And Wake Forest is worst in the ACC, allowing, has allowed 18 sacks. 
Clemson is going to get after Griffiths. Clemson yeah. is going to be able to put him on the ground and make him make mistakes. I think Clemson covers in this game. The Tigers have found another level, another sense of confidence. They're starting to find yeah. their identity. Tyler Brown is emerging. I think this defense is going to feast. Yeah, I think that that's a great pick. And it's at home, a lot of energy, right. um, excitement. 3.30 ACC Network, that might be the first time ever. Um, you know, so interesting for the Tigers there. And, but... Mac, this is big. Uh, Jacob will be attending oh, his first game. First game. First game. Let's go. Come on, big dog. So we'll see uh, if he's undefeated he... against the spread. That's right. He's going to help me out here. He's going to help me out. Well, it depends on which way his mom's going, I guess. We'll find that out in a second. So, um, I just said I clubs and covers. I just said there, Oh, you covers. did. Okay, excuse me. Um, you know, and and I think that uh listen, some people are going to sit here and say, "Well, Wake Forest is is up there in sacks too, right? They they are tied for first in the conference." Mm -hmm. Um they had 10 against ODU. Like, let's yeah. be real. Yeah. Let's be real. Uh, and I get it. That's important. Um but it, it's not it's not going to be the same. You know, Clemson is absolutely going to cause chaos. That's what they've done. That's why Wake Forest, outside of last year, double overtime game, has always struggled in this game because of the slow mesh, which I'm calling it that. We ain't, there ain't no pace to this space. No, uh, they're it, not hanging and banging slow. right now. No, it's slow. It, it's slow, and you got to speed up. You, you, or you're going to get hurt. I mean, Clemson is coming. Uh, they've shown their aggressiveness. They showed that last week against Syracuse. You've got to speed up your thought process and, and decision making. I'm sure they'll have a great game plan. They they have exceptional coaches over there, and and again, always have a great offense. But this is just a little bit of a different monster. And you have a pissed Clemson, a mad Clemson that is taking every game as coulda, woulda, shoulda, wasn't. Now we're going to make everybody kind of pay for it. Uh, Kate Klubnick playing at such a high level. Um, and you know, KG, I don't know if it's a apologizing if I said this before or what, but. You know, I, I think that people like myself, uh, you know, really just kind of forget quarterback is the hardest position. And mm. it's not just this instantaneous magic trick of great success. Like it takes time, brand new coordinator, all new play calling, figuring guys out, new receivers. This stuff takes time. And, and it was pretty unfair of me to, to be as, uh, again, I, I don't know what the word is, bullish as I was, but. You know, this young man has played his tail off, and, and you're seeing him grow before our eyes. Um, now, again, are, are they calling different plays? Is he just becoming more confident? Whatever it is, uh, he's looked fantastic. And, and you said it best, those three or four plays that he had where you're just like, oh, man, that's mm -hmm. a five-star. That's what yeah. it's supposed to look like. And it seems like he's flourishing from that. Guys around him, you're seeing Troy Stilato come out of nowhere. Uh, a guy who we thought for years uh, just couldn't stay healthy now is – and it, and it's certainly balling. And as you said, Tyler Brown, really, honestly, both those guys have been so different from what Clemson has had uh, these last couple of years in regards to twitchiness, surefire hands, catching the football, moving in the pocket with their quarterback and, and finding plays. Um, I think we also need to see our guy, Will Shipley, kind of unleash this game. And, and you know, for, just for his confidence, he had 18 rushes last year, or excuse me, last week. I think only averaged like two yards a rush. Like, that's tough. Mm -hmm. Um, so get him out in space, get him involved. Uh, again, certainly the passing game was fantastic to see Will continue to, to evolve there. But I think at the end of the game, when we talk Monday, it's going to be all about that defense. And Clemson covers, and yeah. I think they make it really difficult for Wake. I'm going to defend you here for a second because when you were calling out Cade on Twitter, that was during the Clemson-Duke game where he obviously struggled. I think he'd be the first to admit it. And you, as a proud alum, watching your your program get blown out by Duke. <laughs> in it's, person. It was bad. <laughs> it's just not, you know, it's you're not going to have measured takes That's in right. that moment. That's right. It's just That's a reality. Right. But as I said last week, you couldn't you couldn't have asked for a worse start to the season. And yes. Klubnik has bounced back, stayed in it, mentally locked yeah. in. And that's that's really impressive. The ability yeah. to do yeah. that. It's all about the after finish. A tough start. It's all about the finish. Got a great opportunity in front of him. Okay, all about the finish. Let's finish with the speed round with some of these sad, sweet, sad games. Um, <laughs> NC State is hosting Marshall, 2 p.m. CW. This is actually interesting because NC State's six and a half point favorite, and we talked about it on Monday's pod. What are they going to do about the quarterback position? I said it's unfair to the rest of your team, specifically a guy like Peyton Wilson, who has put his entire – body, mind, and soul into this program to stick with the quarterback that you don't think yeah. gives you the best chance to win. Brandon Armstrong's yeah. not giving you the best chance to win. NC State's going with MJ Morris. What can we expect, Mac? How is this going to yeah. look? 
Yeah. Well, and, and I said, do you just save them and have three years from right. them? But then uh, I said, that's not then, fair to these guys. Right. It's not. And then I asked Joe Giglio what he thought about this situation. <laughs> Did you save him? He said, listen, dog, you don't know if he'll be there next year. You got to That's true. He could transfer. Him. Listen, that guy's from Georgia. Georgia hasn't had the best quarterback play. Yeah. You never know what happens. NIL yeah. does some crazy things. So, uh, and I understand that. And, and quite frankly, they could still make some noise. They only have one conference loss. Who knows what could mm -hmm. happen, you know, for NC State here. Uh, but the, the, the biggest um, thing that I will kind of bring back up is, is receiver play. True, I mean, ain't, true. Bringing, ain't starting no new receivers. I mean, those guys aren't coming out of anywhere. But does MJ make them better? Does MJ – make tight window throws because these guys aren't getting the best separation? Do, do they call plays differently because he's in? And, and is he more effective with his wheels? You know, Brendan has always been that kind of bulldozer type guy. Uh, can MJ be more of a Ferrari? Uh, you know, and, and when we saw, you know, the, the, the great offenses that, you know, Virginia had and, and Bryce Perkins, that dude was slippery. That guy made moves. Yeah. Can MJ be more of that instead of the bulldozer that Brennan was? Um, we will see. This is a really good Marshall team, a very good defense, a stingy defense, a, an offense that's going to run the ball, which I think actually is favorable to NC State. They, they've done a really good job of yeah. defensively. I'm think I'm taking the Wolfpack here. I think this essentially saves their season because when you look at their schedule and you look at the home games that they have, imagine if they if they lose this, I have to think people are checking out and they have yeah. Clemson coming to town in a couple of weeks. Miami coming to town, and then to finish the season, North Carolina, you have to have that 12th man in those games. It, it is vital. So I think this essentially saves the season for NC State, keeps everybody much invested, uh, and, and, right. and gets gets people going. And I just hope we see that from MJ. Um, and, again, I will say this. You, you feel horrible for Brennan. Uh, th this was his al potential last shot, and, uh, you know, it just didn't work. And who knows? You're, you're a rolled ankle away from being back in. So, you know, I hope right. he stays ready and all these things, but it does stink when we see that. And actually, I think I read something today. Phil Dracovic got benched. And, and so yes, I saw that as well. that have transferred with their former coordinators are now not the guys. And, and it's, Pitt's on it's, a bye. It's a weird thing. It's a weird Pitt's thing. Pitt's on a bye. They don't play this yeah. week. So yeah. I guess they're using that to get um, a new quarterback ready. Get Mac fired on your day off, KG. It's not good. Man, he had one job. Uh, this is the most important NC State Marshall game of all time. I think you're right. And they've only played they play? like five times, I think. Okay. Okay. But you're you're right. I mean, this could either send your season into a tailspin where you think maybe we don't have any quarterbacks if MJ doesn't yeah. look good. Yeah. Or this could say, this could give you, this, this could feel like a brand new season if you go out right. there and look good. Your right. fans could be completely invested again. And you've yeah. got a bunch of great teams coming to town. Rashina Lee for... Marshall's a dude. Got to stop Bad that boy. guy. Bad this boy. is the first game that Marshall's an underdog this season. That's interesting. Mm. And here's the stat that scares me. I'm taking NC State to cover because I believe in MJ Morris. But NC State is 0-4-1 versus the spread this season. And I think, you know, this. I'm just treating this as a new NC State team now with MJ Morris. We'll see if Wipe I'm right. Wipe the slate clean, baby. Wipe it clean. Yeah, I feel like it's a new slate. But... <laughs> Lord, they have not been able to, able to cover. So just we'll see. take NC State at your own peril. Last two games, Mac, BC at Army, Virginia hosting William & Mary. Virginia should beat William & Mary. I don't even know if we want to talk about that game. Boston College at Army. Um, I'm going to take Army. BC Whoa. has really struggled against teams that can pound the rock and control the clock. Yeah. And BC has had some serious turnover issues. If you do that against Army, the way they control the ball – yeah. I don't I don't love it. I'm taking Army minus three. Well, I'm USA, gonna have to tell USA. our great USA. I'm gonna tell our friend uh Christian Mahogany, and he's gonna be disappointed in oh. me. I'm rocking with him. I what I saw love from Christian, them and though. kind of the resurgence, the the comeback win. I think they build off that confidence. Okay. Uh, I, okay. I think that the team is really buying into to you know Castellanos and, and the growth that I saw. I mean, some of those throws was just like, woo. If he can channel this, if he can get this going, if you know, but but can't turn it over. Can't have all the penalties. Mm. I think B, I think BC finds a way here, and uh, okay. you know it, th th this is this is going to be a tough finish for them, but they have to do well. You know, for a lot of people's kind of you know livelihood here. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Mac. We disagree. I'm just going to run through this real fast. We disagree on Notre Dame, Louisville, <laughs> Syracuse, North Carolina, Georgia Tech, Miami, and Army Boston College. This Ooh. is going to be a moving week. 
Yeah. You know, what's going to be funny is when we go like two and two and we're just in the same spot. Yeah. yeah. That's probably going to happen. (laughs) Let's be honest. (laughs) Love to see it. You love to see it. Uh, Quick thought on Virginia. They've been very consistent. They've been very close. Can they get it done? Does this create any spark? I think this is their only win. That's it. Uh, (laughs) This, they, they can't lose this game. Please. This would be like losing to Furman. You can't. Mm. No, Has no, no, happened? no, Virginia. Has Clemson ever lost to Furman before? I don't know, probably in 1907 Maybe. or something. We're going to do this live right now. Everybody's going to watch me do this. Clemson Max, versus they Furman. Can't. I feel like the fact that we're wins. saying, Virginia, you got to get this win. Like, to me, this isn't even a game you talk about, right? <laughs> Virginia. Oh, why oh. is it so hard? What is it called? Winspedia? What is it called? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right, here I bet they beat him at some point back in the day. I'm sorry. And they were things. wearing leather helmets. Wait, I don't think it's even going to show me. They probably, I don't know. They probably didn't. We'll, we'll update the people later. I'm not showing you. We'll find it. We'll find it later. Anyway, great episode. Virginia, from us. you're going to win. Uh, you can do Virginia, this. Positive affirmations. Game. First one. <laughs> Let's go, musket. Get that cannon ready, baby. Let's sling it around. Come on, big dog. Defense, I need you to do your part. Anyway, appreciate <laughs> you guys tuning in. Another great episode of Grand Lincoln Mac Lane. Appreciate our friends over at Ingles. Uh, again, as I mentioned, kind of on Sat or Saturday, on Wednesday, a lot of fun stuff coming. A little mm-hmm. bit of a different twist. You guys may have seen it on social media, uh, but it's coming. And we need you guys to go over to YouTube, subscribe, leave some comments. Of course, the OGs over on Apple Podcasts as well. Rate, review, subscribe. We greatly appreciate that. But until next time, we'll see y'all.